Thank you so much for being with us today, Molly, and I really appreciate your taking the time. Just like to ask you a few questions about your life as an activist and starting with what led you in your youth to become an activist? Absolutely. Uh, thanks for having me. It's great to be with you. Uh, I think as a youth, I was really driven by some issues around my identity as a Penobscot, as an indigenous person, and how I saw that being kind of trampled on by a lot of people in dominant society. And what probably really sparked my activism was seeing Indian mascots in use in schools. Um, seeing my peers in other schools using fake feathers, fake headdresses and, and war paint and stuff like that. It really made me angry, it made me confused, it upset me. And I was really lucky that I was guided by some strong mentors along with a very deep rooted sense of self into activism around these Indian mascots. And that is certainly something that continued into my professional life. And it's really something that broadened my scope to understand all of the racial inequities around us and that these mascots were really a symptom of a bigger problem. So Maine passed the bill last year that outlawed Indian mascots in uh, public schools and universities. And I am constantly getting updates from around New England and around the country of different states trying to take this on. Um, they want copies of the legislation. They want to know how we accomplished it here. So thankfully, it, it spread this campaign. And with the Washington football team changing their name uh, from the harmful racial slur, that really gave the whole movement a big boost. What continues to guide you and motivate you? Because I know you do a lot of work beyond just the mascot work. Uh, I've been lucky to be able to fold my activism into my career, which I think, you know, for a long time, I worked a different job and I would kind of go speak at rallies and write op-eds and be active in these other ways, kind of in my spare time, <laughs> which I barely had any of. So I, with this ambassador job and working in government on behalf of the Penobscot Nation, I've been able to write policy and uh, really get these things on, on a bigger stage. And I've been able to work on, a, on many different issues in the capacity of my career and profession. And I think that's made a big difference for me having this opportunity. We just talked about the Washington team changing their name. We really owe that to Black Lives Matter. And with Native people, we've been really supportive of Black Lives Matter and trying to make some of our struggles known without distracting from that very important movement or hijacking it. And I think we've done a good job of, of having some partnerships and some unity around things while keeping the struggles distinct and, and elevating those voices of Black people that are absolutely in a crisis while shining a light on some areas Indigenous people are also in crisis. What advice do you have for youth activists? I think, you know, never being afraid to speak your mind. I teach my children that people in, in places of power certainly deserve respect, um, but you can question their decisions and you can do so in a diplomatic and honorable manner. Just because you're young doesn't mean you don't know anything is something I tell my kids. And I see them kind of having these sparks of, oh, well, this is wrong. I need to do something about it. And, and I love it because it, it can be uncomfortable to see things wrong and, and to see injustice in the world, but having that awareness of it and coming by coming to those conclusions on your own I, as a young person is so powerful. So I'm, I'm very supportive. And I think when you're a young person, a, a tween or a teen, I have one of each, you can get, you know, especially in this pandemic and this atmosphere, it's easy to let these emotions overwhelm you. So I teach my kids to feel these emotions, don't ignore them, but kind of let them go through you and learn from them instead of like taking you all in. Cause it's so easy to get lost in the sadness and the anger. And I think that where we'll all move forward in a much better place is when we learn from those emotions and really focus on our goals and making things better. That is great advice. Thank you so much. I appreciate your taking time to speak with me today. 